We could be on the verge of uncovering evidence that will change this case forever. I do not have the time or the stomach to watch every episode of Hunting Hitler and chronicle all the lies and deceptions the show employs. After making a video about the dishonest nature of the show in general, and another video about the show's untrustworthy host, Bob Bear, I had not planned on revisiting the subject. But then a fact was pointed out to me that I felt compelled to address. Was your father a Nazi? Si, si. mucho, no era el único. We're looking for names, documents, dates. When season two, episode one of the show first aired, it began with a man in Argentina claiming his father gave him a photo of Hitler taken in Argentina in 1961. The so-called investigators made it seem as if they had found the Holy Grail. Who's this? This is the photo of Adolf Hitler in Misiones. My heart's racing a little bit. Since the smoking gun, I've been spent the last 12 years of my life looking for. Bob Baer then subjected the image to what seemed like a rigorous examination, and the show more than suggested that this was a genuine photo of Hitler taken long after his death. I got an earlobe. Look at this shape of the ear, this shape of the ear here. Very similar. Look at how that mouth, they fall right on top. So all of these things are lining up. And then this nasal labial shape here is lining up as well. It overlays very well. Adolf Hitler, he's alive well after 1945. I would be pursuing the case. The show then left the viewers hanging about the photo question and moved on to a bunch of other phony facts and misdirection for a couple episodes. Not until season two, episode four, does Bob Bear look at the photo again, but he pretends as if it is the first time he has seen it. Bob then makes it clear that he is very skeptical about the photo's authenticity, and he believes it would be irresponsible of them to show the photo on screen before examining it. Their examination from the same expert as before with the same equipment suddenly proves that the photo was not Hitler. But they still try to spin the story as if they were wise to look at the matter so carefully. The investigative team, they were able to uncover this photograph that is ostensibly one of Adolf Hitler from 1961. Frankly, if this were really a picture of Hitler, it would change history. I mean, this is potential proof positive that the guy got to Argentina, but and then we get something like a picture, my antenna go up. Like, uh-oh, got to look into this. A photo of Hitler in 1960, I approach that with complete skepticism. Until we can confirm, get some sort of confirmation on this picture, uh, it would be irresponsible to show it on air. It certainly looks like it could be Adolf Hitler, but yeah, we have to be really careful with this. We have great responsibility that comes with this investigative undertaking. My major problem with the photo is we just know so little about this. Just because the photograph is found in Argentina doesn't mean that's where the photograph was taken. We don't know what it is. It's our job to get to the bottom of this particular photograph. So I've ordered a forensic analysis of the photograph, also to undertake the, the facial recognition. Over the last 72 hours, Anametrics Technologies has analyzed the potential photograph of Adolf Hitler in Argentina after World War II. Their state-of-the-art facial recognition software is used by law enforcement and military agencies around the world. They're scanning the images, there's an algorithm, and it gives a percentage of what are the odds that the two images match. They have shared the results of their examination with the team. What we're able to learn from undertaking that type of forensic examination, as well as our own reconnaissance, our own independent research, we determine that 
This is not a photograph of Adolf Hitler. As someone who's done a lot of work, uh, uh, forensic work with, with photographs, I can tell you it wasn't Adolf Hitler that was taken in the 1960s. That's okay. That's what we do. We had to investigate it. We did investigate it. We move on from there. All I can do is deal with the evidence as it comes across my desk. It's like I'm sitting back at Langley, right, trying to figure out what's going on. Now, we don't know the origin of this photograph, but on the surface, it absolutely looks like an aged Adolf Hitler. So I completely understand how if you were in a small town in Argentina, and all these sightings Hitler are happening all around the world. And you come across this photo, of course you'd think it was Hitler. But at the end of the day, we have to separate the good evidence from the bad. I have learned that if you watch the rebroadcast of Season 2, Episode 1 on TV or through any on-demand service, you will find that the photographic expert does not appear in that episode, and the photo is not actually shown. They deliberately recut the episode to make it seem as if they were doubtful about the photo all along and had never hyped it up in the first place. It overlays very well. Adolf Hitler, he's alive well after 1945. I would be pursuing the case. But that's not the worst part. The show refuses to tell you what this photo actually is, as if its origins are completely mysterious and the guy in Argentina genuinely received it from his father. In reality, this is a picture of Mo Howard, from the Three Stooges. It was taken from a home movie of Mo outside his house in California in 1973. By the way, Mo's given name was Moses Harry Horowitz. Yes. He was from a Jewish family, and he, along with his brothers, were some of the first celebrities to make fun of Hitler, even before Charlie Chaplin did, because they understood how bad the Nazis were. Our motto shall be, Moronica for Moron! This was not some honest mistake. Someone had to deliberately take a still from that home movie and distort the background so you could not see Moe's house number or any details about where the photo was taken. Then they had to print it out on aged paper with rigid and darkened edges to make it look like it came out of Grandma's scrapbook. They then went so far as to write a year on the back and then convince the guy in Argentina to pretend like he didn't know they were coming to his house where he just happened to have a photo of Hitler. We're trying to find an Edmundo. Sí, uh, Edmundo is my father. He died two years ago. Uh, Ed Edmundo is, is his father, but he, he passed away uh, some years ago. OK. Um, we're researchers looking for some information that your father might have known. Could you talk to us for a few minutes? Buscamos un poquito información sobre tu papá, tal vez. Sí, sí, no hay problema. Can we have some time? Please, por favor, pasen. Pasen. Gracias, yes. This is truly disgusting and unscrupulous behavior. And it sickens me that almost no one in the mainstream media has paid any attention to it. Instead, Bob Baer is still employed by CNN and other news outlets as an expert and treated as if he is an honest news professional. The so-called History Channel went on to give him millions of dollars after this forgery to make a third dishonest season of Hunting Hitler, and another dishonest show about the assassination of President Kennedy. People like Bob Baer should not be given a forum to spread disinformation and further confuse the general public about history. Honest journalists and media watchdog groups should have exposed this nonsense from the get-go. But I will continue to put the spotlight on liars as best I can.